Hey, how's it going? My name is George and this is video 5 for section 3.7. A little more cleanup to do. So once again, I forgot to do the domain and range, right? Please don't do that on your exams. So again, I had already raised the board. So here's a quick sketch of what it looked like. So my domain was what? Well, my domain is everywhere except for where I have the vertical asymptotes. So that was at, what, negative 2 and positive 1. So my domain would be negative infinity up to negative 2, union negative 2 to positive 1, union positive 1 to infinity. And my range is what? My range is all the y values. Well, if I didn't have this middle section, it would be everything except positive 3. But because this middle section runs from negative infinity to positive infinity, then my range is actually all real numbers. So I don't, that asymptote, because this middle section I actually have a value at 3, uh, then it's all real numbers for my range. So again, wanted to clean that up. Sorry about uh, forgetting that again. So, All right, so this video, video five, fifth of five videos for this section, we talk about slant asymptotes. So if you remember when I was giving you the uh, in video three, the asymptote video, if uh, the numerator was less than the denominator, that was y equals zero. If the degrees were equal, then it was the coefficients. But if the, uh, what was it, the numerator is bigger, then we have an issue, then we get what's called a slant asymptote. So we have if r of x is some polynomial p of x over q of x, and the degree of the numerator is one degree larger than the degree of the denominator then we can use division to express r of x as ax plus b plus the remainder divided by the quotient. And ax plus b, this is what? This is like the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b. So this ends up being a line which ends up being our slant asymptote, that portion there. So let's look at an example. Let's graph, or let's sketch maybe is a better word, but let's graph r of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 all over x minus 3. So, what was our steps before? Step 1, factor. So I'm going to rewrite r of x as x, uh, this factors into what? This goes into x minus 5, x plus 1, all over x minus 3. Step two is my y, x and y intercepts. So for the x intercepts, we do what? We set y equals zero. Remember I said that basically all we're doing is set the numerator equal to zero, because the denominator is gonna multiply by zero, so it's gone anyways. So for my x intercepts, I say x minus five times x plus one is zero. So by zero property rule, x minus five is zero x plus 1 is 0, so x is 5, x is negative 1. Now my y-intercepts. 
So y intercepts, I set x equals to zero. So again, usually this is easier to go back to the original because any piece that has an x is gone. So I get what? Negative 5 over negative 3. So y intercepts set x equals 0. So I get negative 5 over negative 3, which is positive 5 thirds. Step three, my vertical asymptote. So that's what? That's where is the denominator equal to zero? So x minus three is zero, so x is equal to three. That's my vertical. Step four would be finding my horizontal asymptotes. So now I go back and look. The degree of the numerator is two. The degree of the denominator is 1. So in this case, the numerator is bigger than the denominator, so I don't have any horizontal asymptotes. But because the degree of the numerator is bigger by 1 than the denominator, it means I have a slant asymptote. And so what I do there is I'm going to divide, uh, just going to divide this guy out. So because the bottom is x minus 3, that's like x minus c, so I'm fortunate I can use uh, synthetic division. So I get what? 1, negative 4, negative 5. So I bring down the 1. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8. Remember that last piece is always our remainder. So I can rewrite my r of x, the original rational function, as, well, just remember what happened when we were doing synthetic division. Whatever the numerator started as, it goes down by 1, so that's just x to the first power. So this is really x minus 1, and then my remainder, minus 8 over x minus 3. And so this guy here is the slant asymptote. So if I'm now going to sketch this, So my x-intercepts are at 5 and at negative 1. My y-intercept is at positive 5 thirds. So that's what? It's about 2 and, uh, what, 2 and 2 thirds? So there. Now my asymptotes, so my vertical asymptote is that x is equal to positive 3. So this guy here, no horizontal, but I do have a slant asymptote. And again, like I told you, this is basically like y equals mx plus b. So that means my intercept is at negative 1, and slope is 1, which means I go up 1 over 1. Up one over one. Up one over one. So that means this dotted line here is my slant asymptote. So instead of making like a cross, it's a vertical with a slanted asymptote, no horizontal. And again, as long as I have some points, I don't really have to worry about end behavior because I know I have a point here, well this thing isn't going to run this way because it can't cross the asymptote, so this one has to go down towards negative infinity. This one, whoop, that's not very good. This will keep continuing through, getting closer and closer to this slant asymptote. And same idea here, this one's going to come down towards the slant asymptote, come through here, and get closer to the vertical asymptote. So that's the graph or the sketch
there's probably a better word for it, of this rational function. In this case, we didn't have the horizontal asymptote, we had a slant asymptote. And that wraps up section 3.7. So as I told you in video one, a lot of material, but it all kind of builds on each other so that at the end, we can either graph um, a rational function that has vertical and horizontal, or as we just saw here, vertical and a slant asymptote. So that wraps up chapter three as well. Come on back and we'll start tackling uh, chapter four.